Hello. Happy Salal to everyone. Can I get some happy Salals in the chat? See who's in tonight. Welcome to the trivia stream, our online trivia live stream that we do. Usually we run this every Monday, uh, 8 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time. Uh, obviously, that is a really difficult time for people in Korea. So uh, we figured over the holiday, uh, we'd, we'd share the love with uh, some people in our former home. Um, so for a lot of you, this will be your first or maybe your second time playing. So I'll just run through how it works. I'll give you all the questions here on the stream. You're playing along on another device or in another tab, or you can, like if you're watching the stream on YouTube, you can kind of pop me into a little screen and screen and just play it all on one phone. Uh, but you're entering your answers into the form. So uh, some of them will be multiple choice. Some of them you type in an answer. Some of them you might choose a picture. Um, rounds that do use pictures, you might have to do a capture after you've finished entering your answers. There's five questions in each round. Uh, your answers aren't locked in until you hit submit. So if you're not sure about question one, you want to go back and change it. Uh, then you can do that as long as you haven't hit, uh, as long as you haven't hit submit yet. Happy New Year, St uh, Stefan. So yeah, as long as you haven't hit submit, you can go back and you can change your answers uh, before you hit submit. So that that's what locks your answers in. Um, also, every round it's going to ask you to enter your team name so that's so we can keep track of the score so in other same team i know i remember from back in my days doing the uh um the sticky fingers pub quiz you know people like to enter a different joke name every round uh that's well and good when i can tell who it is from your handwriting but uh, on these forms you do need to use the same team name each time so we can keep track of your scores um so those, those couple of little notes there just so everything runs smoothly because i know for most of you, this will be your first time playing with us. Uh, otherwise, uh, let's all have some fun. We've got eight rounds of trivia coming up. Yeah, each one's just five questions. So, you know, this should run, uh, I expect, around 90 minutes. Uh, I know it's probably, it was quite a late start for you guys over there, as it is. Uh, let's have a look at the rounds we've got coming up. So, round one. Uh, is general knowledge. Pretty basic. Everyone knows what that is. Round two, take a closer look. So you're going to have to try and see if you can guess what you might be doing in these rounds uh, from the titles. Some are more cryptic than others. Uh, round three, odd drug out. Round four, shrugging lady emoji, uh, movie camera emoji. Uh, round five, superb owl. I mean, round six, Super Bowl. Easy mistake to make. Then round seven, we've got momentary matrimony. And then closing out, once again, round eight, a second helping of general knowledge. So topping and tailing the evening with general knowledge. Uh, that's something we do every week on our Monday streams. So tonight's questions are the same questions we ran on Monday as part of our like European time zone stream. That's why there's a couple of Super Bowl themed rounds in there. It was every, this, these questions originally aired the day after the Super Bowl. Um, but you know, they're still, they're still good. They're still fresh. They're a few days old. They're not that stale. Uh, none of you guys have seen them before. That's the main thing. All right. So, uh, let's get started. I think, uh, we've given people about five minutes to get on the stream. If they join us halfway through round one, I'll just repeat the questions. Um, yeah, let's get into it. Round one, question one. So, uh, Andy Jassy will replace Jeff Bezos as Amazon CEO to this year. So, Jeff Bezos, he's stepping down. I think it's the third quarter of this year. Andy Jassy is going to take over. Uh, what professional sports team is Jesse a minority owner of? Is it the Seattle Seahawks, 
the Seattle Mariners, the Seattle Kraken, or the Oklahoma City Thunder? So what sports team is the new, so I think he currently works there already. He's already an executive at Amazon and he's going to take over as CEO. Which of those sports teams, Seattle or formerly of Seattle sports teams, uh, is he a minority owner of? All right, question two. Last week, social media influencer Julia Rose vandalized the Hollywood sign. Uh, what did she make it say? So she altered the she altered the Hollywood sign to read something else. What did she make it say? Was it Hollywood? Holly poop? Hell world? Or Holly boob? All right, question three. What is the nickname of the recently discovered smallest reptile and possibly smallest vertebrate in the world? Is it the micro gecko, the nano chameleon, the pico skink, or the femto iguana? So which of those is the nickname of the recently discovered smallest reptile in the world? Question four. How did convicts on Wyoming's death row earn stays of execution in 1911? Did they, uh, was it by playing baseball, by live nude modeling, by brewing and distilling alcohol, or was it by executing other convicts? So which of those activities did death row convicts take part in to avoid or to delay execution back in 1911 in Wyoming? And uh, last question of the first round, question five. Uh, under a treaty with Italy, the tiny Republic of San Marino is forbidden from cultivating which crop? So. If you don't know where San Marino is, it's a teeny little city-state. It's an enclave within Italy, entirely surrounded by Italy. Uh, is it forbidden from growing tomatoes, tobacco, wheat, or artichokes? So which of those crops is San Marino not allowed to grow because of its treaty with Italy? All right, so I guess we'll just have the questions cycling on screen there um, and you can you know take a minute or two to think about it but start getting those answers in so you select each one you can go back and forth and change your answers uh, if, you're, if you're still thinking about them once you're happy with all your answers uh, after question five you'll see green button that says submit you hit that and that will lock your answers in uh, Jessica my wife slash producer will be able to see your answers and get them entered into our scoreboard. So we'll see uh, how the teams are doing after the first round. And uh, yeah, I hope everyone's having a good Salal. How, how is everyone doing the time off? Was it uh, was, what, probably the second day off of work for you guys? How, how long do you get off? Is it different hogwarts? Are there still many public school teachers out there? It seemed like it was all hogwarts by the time I left. Yeah, but how long have you got off? What are you doing with the time? Is anyone, any, oh, I guess there's no travel. That's it, everyone used to travel during the breaks when I was there, but this uh, pandemic's really thrown a spanner in the works. I can relate, sitting at home, lazy as fuck, drinking, gaming, public school's back on Monday. Two days off, man, that's pretty brutal. That's uh, that's pretty short as well, break. Like, yes, you got the weekend. Just, yeah, when, when Sol falls on a weekend, I guess they don't uh, extend it. They don't bump over, they don't give you the Monday off or nothing. 
Uh, we like we teach online uh, when we're not hosting trivia, and uh, it was the same same for my company. We got Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday off. All right, so let's get those uh, answers in. And uh, how about just the solar new year, I guess? You know, I do the other one every week, but for you guys, like, how's 2021 shaping up? Better than 2020 so far? I managed to do dry January. Pretty uh, pleased with myself about that. Uh, obviously, no longer, no longer dry. But uh, easing back into it. All right, I think we're just waiting on one or two more teams to get those answers in. So uh, if you've selected all five answers and you haven't hit submit, just check your phone. Just check if, you, if you're in that situation. You do have to hit the submit button at the end for us to see your answers. Uh, and oh, yeah, if you're playing in a team, uh, you only need to submit once. That's uh, another little note there. So that's a little 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 message. You'll see Jessica uh, dropping into the chat with messages from time to time. Um, but yeah, I think uh, just because we've got so many first-time players in right now, who uh, a lot of people I think are requesting assistance at the same time. So. Uh, just a little bit of a hold up on this first round, but should be running smoother once we get to the rest of them and everyone knows what we're doing. <laughs> but I think, yeah, we'll take the questions out. I think everyone's seen them by now. I think everyone knows their answers at this point. They just, uh, some people are just making requests of how to submit them and so on. Yeah, I was uh, pretty pleased with the old uh, hitting the month successfully. That's what I normally do. Uh, it's not a great look on, on the stream, though. <laughs> all right, so I think we have all the answers submitted now. Um, so we'll go through the answers. So uh, first up. Uh, we had uh, Andy Jassy, uh, what sports team? Oh, yeah. So just to let everyone know, everyone did submit their answers early. Everyone submitted their answers on time. Uh, it's just some people, I think, submitted their answers like a bunch of times. Um, so that's what the, the backup there was, just uh, sorting out what team was what. So just uh, next round onwards, just you only need to submit once. Um, and that just keeps everything running faster, but you know, teething pains, <laughs> that's just how things go. Um, okay. So Andy Jassy, he is the, uh, part owner of the Seattle Kraken, America's youngest professional sports team. Uh, so new they are in fact yet to play a game. They're going to take to the US for the first time later this year at the beginning of the NHL's 2021-2022 season, uh, if it, if it happens who knows what's going to happen uh in the world then uh question two julia rose uh you used blankets to make the uh hollywood sign say holly boob um so i think that was a protest about uh, instagram's nipple censorship policy uh then uh question three uh, it's the nano chameleon, the smallest reptile in the world. Um, so I think there already was uh, a micro chameleon. So when they found an even smaller one, they called it the nano chameleon. So for scientific name, Brachysia nana, 
uh, the adult male is a mere 13.5 millimeters long, real tiny. Um, then we had in 1910 to 1911, um, inmates at Wyoming State Penitentiary were made to play for the prison's baseball team with promises of reduced sentences or stays of execution for victories and threats of punishment for losses. Uh, prison wardens ran an illegal, an illegal betting ring on the games. Uh, the Wyoming State Penitentiary All-Stars went undefeated before the racket was rumbled. And finally, uh, question five. Uh, under part of the International Friendship Treaty with Italy, San Marino refrains from growing tobacco and manufacturing certain products. Uh, in return, Italy provides the landlocked microstate with an annual stipend of 400 tons of tobacco, 200 tons of, uh, sorry, 40 tons of tobacco, 20 tons of cigarettes, and 250 tons of sea salt. All right, so let's have a look. <laughs> yeah, the Pico Chameleon, uh, when, they, when, the, when that drops, it's going to be just like in your bloodstream. Uh, let's see the scoreboard. All right, so it looks like we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven teams in. CNS looking like the strong, the team to beat straight out the gate with five points. Very stable genius in second place with three. And then tied in third place, we've got Coping with COVID and Fear the Quiz. Frozen Escape, Mousy, and Bill Murray have some ground to make up, uh, but they've got seven rounds to do it, plenty of time. And don't worry, it's not all general knowledge tonight. So let's have a look at round two. So round two, take a closer look. Uh, what we've done here, it basically really, really zoomed in pictures. And you just have to type in what you think each picture is. Uh, so this one. It's not multiple choice. You're typing in what you think the answer is. Uh, let's see the first picture so you get what we mean. All right, so it's a really, really zoomed in picture. Uh, if you think you know what it is, you know, type in your guess. Not a lot of excess commentary for me to do on this round. Okay, let's see the second picture. I believe these pictures are in the answer forms as well, if you need a bit of extra time looking at them. All right, so we've got picture number two. All right, let's see the third one. All right, can you guess what it is? Okay, picture number four. Hmm, shape's a bit more regular here. And the last one, picture five. All right, so we've got these very zoomed in pictures. Have a think, get your guesses in. Still have them. Oh yeah, no, we don't. Oh, we don't. Um, all right. So I like to think of this round kind of as a metaphor for life. Uh, sometimes you have to take a step back and see the whole picture to really work out what's going on. Do you know what I mean? Really makes you think. And um, bullshit. Uh, I, it's just zoomed in pictures of everyday objects. There's no, there's no deeper philosophical meaning here. We're just looking really closely at some pencil shavings or something. All right, so uh, as the answers come in for this, hopefully it'll go a bit smoother. And we've got some uh, Valentine's Day facts to fill the time for those of you who got your answers in super fast. Uh, 
kindly prepared for us by our producer, Jessica. So questions on love and last week. What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. No more. I wonder if this reveals anything. Uh, the most searched languages to say I love I love you in. I mean, Spanish probably just reveals that there are a lot of Spanish speakers in America. I think it's just the automatic response to uh, to hearing that phrase, Robin. Got a, a kind of an east-west divide, chocolate versus flowers. Uh, interesting some some interesting ones there that that is true for sure uh, is bill murray the t bill murray team still here we uh everyone we've i think we've got all their submissions apart from bill murray i know he likes to just wander into a party and then wander off the old irish goodbye he's he's known for it oh the growing population of galentine's day now, what happened last year for it to, I mean, like Parks and Rec introduced it ages ago. Oh, we can see women more conscientious with gift giving than men. Um, so, so uh, I think uh, if Bill Murray is absent, maybe, uh, we might just have to move along without them. Yeah, scoring has closed. Sorry, Bill Murray, if you are still here. Uh, but you're more than welcome to keep playing with the, uh, the other seven rounds, or the other six rounds. Uh, let's reveal what the answers were for Take a Closer Look. So first up, zoomed in, it's white, looks a bit wet, <laughs> it's a coconut. Uh, it's some kind of shaped metal, and it is the lip of a bottle cap or a bottle top. This one, speckled, blotchy, light and dark. I would say the hardest one. I think a lot when we played this on Monday, a lot of people guessed cheese on toast, which I could see going for, but it was actually a quail's egg, but just egg is fine. Question four, you know, looks very man-made. And in fact, it is, it's tire tracks. And there's the zoomed out picture there. Last one, I think most of us could guess it's a nose. And the trick is guessing what it's the nose of. It's an elephant, elephant's trunk, elephant, elephant's nose, anything like that would have got you the point. All right, so let's see uh, what the scoreboard looks like after that. All right, CNS. Still in the lead, nine points. Very stable genius. Still in second place with six. Um, fear the quiz on five. Uh, so they've wait, no, put the code on five and fear the quiz on six. All right. So, Bill Murray, we've left you on the scoreboard uh, in case you do show back up. Uh, sometimes this happens, people. Either the streams drop or whatever. We'll see if they come back. Um, but uh, so far, looking like CNS are the team to beat. Uh, let's see if anyone can catch up in round three. And round three, we have Odd Drug Out. 
So in this round, uh, we're going to give you some sets of drugs from fiction or journalism in the case of one of the questions. Not all the drugs are fictional, but uh, what you have to do is guess which one is the odd one out based on the criteria that we give you. Uh, you'll see what I mean when we get to question one. So which of these is not mentioned by name in Hunter S. Thompson's famous series drug collection? from Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. So this is the sequence. It appears in both the book and the movie where he's describing the haul of drugs he has for the trip to Las Vegas. Um, which of these is not mentioned? 75 pellets of mescaline, four orange plastic canisters of quaaludes, a salt shaker of cocaine, a pint of raw ether. Which of those is not mentioned by name in Hunter S. Thompson's famous serious drug collection? All right, number two. Uh, which of these is not a street name for the fictional drug Cake from Brass Eye? Uh, is it Clarky Cats, Chronic Basildon Donuts, Ponce on the Heath, or Russell Dust? So for those of you that have seen slash remember Brass Eye, uh, which of those is not the, you know, the made up drug, the giant yellow pill, Cake? Okay, number three. Uh, which of these is not mentioned as one of the available additives in Maloco Plus in A Clockwork Orange? Once again, this is in both the novel and the movie. So instead of drinking alcohol, uh, Alex and his droogs, they drink milk mixed with various drugs. Which of these is not one of them? Is it... Drenchrom, Veloset, Synth Mask, or Lysagil? Drenchrom, Velosot, Veloset, sorry, Synth Mask, or Lysagil? Which one is not one of the uh, milk drugs in A Clockwork Orange? Okay, which of these is not a drug, fictional or other or otherwise, referenced in the cult classic With Nail and I? So your your options there: uh, the Camberwell Carrot, Sir Montel Fifty, High Barnet Sugar Cubes, or Pheno Dihydrochloride <laughs> Benzolex. So which of those is not one of the drugs mentioned in With Nail and I? And finally, which drug do we not see consumed by Vincent, Jules, Mia, or Butch in Pulp Fiction? Is the answer alcohol, marijuana, cocaine, or heroin? Alcohol, marijuana, cocaine, or heroin. Which one is not consumed by Vincent, Jules, Mia, or Butch in Pulp Fiction? Yeah, this this round probably uh, we have a largely British audience uh, on our Monday quiz, and uh, I, think, I feel like we've got a few British cult cultural references in that round that make it a little tougher. I think um, Brass Eye, A Clockwork Orange, and With Nail and I all British books or movies. So it might make it a bit tougher for a largely American audience. But we'll see who's the best at guessing. <laughs> and you guys have seen Pulp Fiction, I'm sure, and possibly Fear and Loathing. Uh, me and Jessica had the classic uh, every, 
every man has had this conversation. It's like the classic, like, bro thing of, you've never seen Pulp Fiction? Um, so, uh, get those get those guesses or answers if you are familiar with those shows and movies in. And uh, yeah, we'll see how everyone's doing after that. Some of them also, they're just pretty hard, you know, <laughs> even if you have seen them. I'm pretty proud of the drug that I made up for Clockwork Orange. I think I made it sound like uh, it's pretty similar to the, uh, to the fake drugs that Anthony Burr just made up. Okay, so answers are in. We're going. We're going through the answers. So first up, uh, it was four uh, orange plastic canisters of Quaaludes in Fear and Loathing. So he does mention. I think I've got the quote here: a whole galaxy of multicolored uppers, downers, screamers, and laughers. So in all those bills, there probably were Quaaludes, but he doesn't mention them by name. Uh, then we've got. Uh, so Clarky Cats is from the sequence it, at the beginning of the drugs episode where he's going around uh, in like the undercover reporter segment, like hassling drug dealers in London, uh, asking for, for like made up drug names. So Clarky Cats, Clarky Cats is one of those. But um, with the cake, the, the cake awareness segment, that's the other three. So Clarky Cats was the answer there. Then Lysagil, that was the not the real uh, Moloko Plus additive. Uh, high Barnet sugar cubes are not mentioned in With Nail and I. So the, the memorable one is the Camberwell carrot. That's the giant spliff with uh, 12 rolling papers that they make near the end of a movie. Uh, the other two are like just stuff that they mentioned in passing. And then um, the drug we do not seem consumed by Vincent, Jules, Mia, or Butch in Pulp Fiction is marijuana. Uh, I think Vince's dealer's girlfriend uh, smokes marijuana. Um, she's smoking weed when they arrive with like the comatose Mia. But <clears throat> we see Vincent sh shoot up heroin and Mia accidentally snorts it. Mia snorts a lot of cocaine. Uh, Vincent drinks some whiskey when he gets to Mia's apartment. But we don't see any of them smoke, uh, smoking weed. All right. So I think, judging by the comments, some people guessed pretty well. And uh, Very Stable Genius's uh, excellent guessing has put them in first place. Uh, CNS uh, still doing very well in second place. Fear the Quiz in third uh, coping with COVID fourth. Bill Murray apparently has uh, disappeared from the face of the earth. Um, but yeah, let's move on. Moving right along. RIP Bill Murray. We'll get to round four. This is our movies round. Well, the other one, the, that last round was kind of movie related. Uh, this is like, guess the title movies from the emojis so this is a kind of semi regular round that we do sometimes with book titles sometimes movies but uh because it's month so all of the movies in this week's round of emoji titles uh will be either from American cinema so Let's see our first set of emojis. So you see the emoji, and you've got to work out what the title is of the movie that we're, we're, we're spelling out with emojis. So 
So there's number one, we've got two emojis there, short and sweet. All right, the second movie. So if in doubt, just remember, there's a kind of a Black History Month theme to, to this week's uh, movie round. So that might give you some inspiration. The third set of emojis. I don't know if any of you ever saw the British game show, game show catchphrase back in the 90s. The host had the expression, say what you see, and that's very much how this round works. And we've got four. So you can be quite, quite literal minded with this. If you don't get it straight away, just run through like synonyms. And then our last one. So no, no multiple choices on this one either. It's another type in your answers deal. All right, so get those answers in. Um, you know, so as I say, we do rounds like this from time to time. Uh, eventually, we're going to reach a point where they add so many emojis. It seems like every year they add, you know, somewhere in the region of like half a dozen to a dozen new emojis. And eventually, there'll be so many that this round will be completely redundant. You'll be able to express yourself with perfect nuanced detail and inflection with emojis alone. Um, but of course, then someone will have to do anything to replace emojis. All right. So um, after the second, uh, after round four, we usually throw in a short intermission. Um, so that's what we're going to do now. Uh, I'll be back with you in a minute, half, two minutes, something like that. And we'll go over the scores to this round. All right. See you in a minute, guys. All right, and we're back. Yes, as uh, Jessica's let you know, I had to go get a beer refill. Also, I just remembered, you guys will appreciate this. You seen these? Look how cute. 
we've got a Korean store nearby, so we usually go there to make sure we're all socked up on Shin Ramen and Dwen Jung. They've got these cute little cacao friends drinks. Anyway, I enjoyed it. Uh, let's uh, go through the answers for the movie round. So first up was Superfly, uh, which could refer to the 1972 Black Exploitation classic or its 2018 remake. And uh, then we had uh, Spike Lee's 2020 war drama, The Five Bloods. Uh, then we had the Oscar-winning coming-of-age tale Moonlight from direct director Barry Jenkins. Uh, then number four was the classic 1992 slasher horror Candyman, uh, which is currently in the process of being rebooted by Jordan Peele. And finally, we had MCU Mega Smash Black Panther, starring the late Chadwick Boseman. This one was, like, it just tastes like fruit juice. This one says it's an apple smoothie. It just tastes like apple juice. I don't know why they call it a smoothie. Um, so let's take a look at the scoreboard after that round. All right. Close at the top. Very stable genius. And, oh, no, the round, the round four scores haven't been added in yet. Uh, we'll see them in a minute. I think we have to refresh the page. There we go. Okay. So it's... Extra tight at the top. That's taking it to a dead heat. Uh, CNS and Very Stable Genius tied on 15 points each. Uh, Fear the Quiz, uh, five points back on 10. So these the top two teams have really established a bit of a lead, like a full round's worth of points lead for those top two teams. Of course, we've got half a quiz to go, so a, a round's worth of points can evaporate pretty quickly. Uh, so Fear the Quiz in third place there, but it's look or second place, I guess, because the First two teams are tied. Depends how you work that out. Um, so uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. But it looks so far like a two-horse race. Round five, Super Bowl, Super Bowl, Super Bowl. We had the Super Bowl last Sunday. Uh, so we've got a couple of Super Bowl-y type rounds. Super Bowl is a pretty common joke about the whole thing. Um, we've got. Uh, <laughs> We've got nine famous pop culture owls for you to choose from for each question. Yes, the owls indeed. Uh, we've got uh, yeah, we've got some common pop culture owls for you to well-known pop culture owls for you to choose from from movies, TV, uh, the corporate logos. And you just need to choose the correct answer for each of the five prompts. So that's nine owls, but only five prompts. So four of these owls are red herrings. Can they be both owls and herrings? Well, these ones can. Um, so only each owl is only used once. So it's not like I'm going to give you two clues that both refer to the same owl. So with this one, uh, we have set it up so that in order to move on to the next question, you have to have selected something. You, that still means you can still go back and change your answer before you hit submit. It's just when we ran rounds like this in the past, sometimes people act would like move on with the intention to go back and they'd forget and they'd submit their answers and they'd be like, oh shit, I forgot to put something for question two. Uh, so we've just, uh, we've added that to prevent that from happening. Um, but yeah, you can go, you can still hit back to change your answers before you hit submit. Let's have a, let's hear the first clue anyway. Let's, uh, the first one is, Uh, this owl is able to use two attacks on each turn. So you've got, depending on the size, your screen size, it'll either be a little three by three grid of owls or a kind of awkward string of owls. But uh, you just need to choose which of those owls uh, is able to use two attacks on each turn. All right, owl number two. Uh, this owl seems to be affected by dyslexia in his appearances in print and film. This 
owl number three. This owl shared a voice actor with Rabbit from the Winnie the Pooh franchise. Owl number four. Uh, this owl was redesigned to look simpler and cleaner in 2013. And owl number five. Uh, this owl was portrayed in film by an actor of the opposite sex. All right, so those are your five clues. Each one corresponds to one of those nine owls. So can you choose the correct owls from among that selection? Uh, fictional owls definitely tend to fit into a certain pigeonhole. But, um, uh, Definitely one of the owls in our selection today. I feel like a lot of you will have been harassed by before. Certainly, certainly me. Uh, no, I don't feel like learning why some words in Romanian end with three eyes today. Please stop bugging me. <laughs> but I'm sure any of you learning Korean have probably dealt with that guy before. Oh, we've got some owl facts. Oh, and just animal facts. Kind of uh, Valentine's adjacent animal facts. Some, some humans as well. To be fair, I think they're awake for like 20 minutes a day. Oh, can we see the questions once more, please, Jessica? Yeah, they come. So owl number five. Uh, this owl was portrayed in film by an actor of the opposite sex. Owl number four was redesigned to look simpler and cleaner in 2013. Uh, owl number three shared a voice actor with Rabbit from the Winnie the Pooh franchise. Owl number two seems to be affected by dyslexia. And Owl number one is able to use two attacks on each turn. So I hope that was helpful. Yes, uh, take a think about, I can hear Jessica mocking my, my beer ah, from the other room. <laughs> oh, I've been out of focus, what's going on there? There we go. Think about your knowledge of pop cultural owls. How many of those owls do you recognize? That's uh, obviously the first, the first obstacle is right, trying to figure out who all those owls are. Some, uh, like, as I said, pop culture owls often tend to fall into a certain stereotype. I think a couple of them in there, in that selection, are pretty similar owls. When I was writing this, I did see, like, there's a lot of uh, 
Disney movies with the same kind of arch archetypal owl character uh, hanging out. All right, I, I think everyone's got their answers in, so let's go through the answers. First up, this owl is able to use two attacks on each turn. It's the owl bear. So in Dungeons and Dragons, fifth edition, an owl bear can make two attacks in each round of combat. Once with its claws and once with its beak. Number two, this owl seems to be affected by dyslexia. Uh, it's Winnie the Pooh's friend, simply named Owl, who re uh, regularly spells his name Wol, W-O-L, which may indicate dyslexia. Then number three, Archimedes from Disney's The Sword in the Stone was voiced by Junius Matthews, the original voice of Rabbits from Winnie the Pooh. So that's Merlin's Owl Archimedes there. Uh, number four, um, this owl was redesigned to look simpler and cleaner in 2013. Now, although Duo from Duolingo, who we also showed, is notorious for his series of progressively more minimalist redesigns, he did not receive one in 2013. Uh, that was the year of the one and only redesign of Hootie, Hootie, the Hooters mascot. And finally, uh, who was portrayed in the film by an actor of the opposite sex? Uh, it was, in fact, Hedwig. So Hedwig from Harry Potter is canonically female. But male snowy owls were used in filming as they're smaller and thus easier for child actors to hold the mendel. Ah, oh, what cute owls there. So let's have a look at the answers. Or oh, we've seen the answers at the scores. And oh CNS. Tough round, tough round for CNS gives very stable genius uh, a three point lead on 18 points. Fear the quiz catching up. They're almost in that top pack, 13 points. And then everyone else within a point of each other, coping with COVID, Frozen Escape and Mousy 11, 11, 10. It's actually all shaping up to be a lot closer than it was looking just a round ago. All right, good stuff. We're looking for the whole field to get tighter as we get to the, the closing rounds. And following at Superb Owl, we have a more conventional Super Bowl themed round coming up. Haha, <laughs> very funny, Jessica. All right, so. This is just some regular old Super Bowl themed questions. Some of them have been multiple choice. Some of them you type your answer in. Um, question one, which city hosted Super Bowl 55 on Sunday? So the Sunday just gone was the Super Bowl. Which was the host city? Was it Miami, Florida, Los Angeles, California, Tampa, Florida, or Phoenix, Arizona? All right, question two. Uh, how much did 30 seconds of ad time uh, cost during Sunday's Super Bowl? So how much were companies paying for a 30 second ad during the game? So you just type your answer in to guess and uh, we'll have like a range of, of uh, where you can get the point. If you get if you get it bang on, if you get the exact number, we'll give you two points. All right. Uh, question three: uh, Language Trend Trackers Global Language Monitor named which Super Bowl halftime inspired phrase Hollywood's top contribution to language in two thousand four? Beating out Bootylicious and Governator. So, which Super Bowl halftime inspired phrase was Hollywood's top contribution to language in 2004? 
All right, number four. Uh, not including teams that have never played in a Super Bowl, which team has the longest currently active Super Bowl appearance drought? So that means time elapsed between... No! Uh, oh, yes, I thought the answers were coming up. <laughs> Uh, New York Jets, the Detroit Lions, the Minnesota Vikings, and the Arizona Cardinals. I uh, really forgot myself there. I forgot there were uh, multiple choice rounds, uh, multiple choice questions here. Yeah, the New York Jets, the Detroit Lions, the Minnesota Vikings, or the Arizona Cardinals. So what we mean there is uh, the amount of time elapsed between the last time they played in a Super Bowl and today. So the teams that have never played in a Super Bowl that doesn't apply to them because that would be infinite. They've, uh, they've never had a Super Bowl appearance. So only including teams that have played in a Super Bowl at least once. And the longest drought, it means a Super Bowl appearance, not Super Bowl win. And uh, question five, first airing opposite the Super Bowl in 2005, uh, MVPs at this event have included Fumble, Bumble and Major Jacques, and players can receive penalties including uh, <laughs> unnecessary roughness, pause interference, and neutral bone infraction. Yes, that was a really funny sound. You'll have to start on me if you want me to make it again. So, what is this event that has ordered the MVP, MVP to fumble, bumble, and Major Jacques? And where players can receive penalties, including unnecessary roughness, pause interference, and neutral bone infraction. All right, so yeah, pretty, pretty standard Super Bowl themed questions there. Uh, what time was the Super Bowl on in Korea? Uh, it was, so we're based in Romania, uh, in case I haven't mentioned, or in case you don't know. Um, and it was like 1.30 a.m. here. Uh, it, I, what is that like? It, like, I guess it probably would have been... Okay. <laughs> uh, norm, normal-ish time. I guess like, more, like, early morning is not that bad to get up. Like, like 8.39, that's not too bad. I guess unless you have to work. Uh, I we we actually took the following day off. We're like we're gonna we're gonna stay up until like five six o'clock watching this. Uh, I mean, you didn't miss uh, you didn't miss much. It wasn't a great game, and I'm not just saying that because of the outcome. Uh, just like kind of one sided. Um, honestly, though. Uh, Getting, getting real hard for, for Brady doubters at this point. I hate him as much as the next guy, but I mean, you've really got to be reaching real hard to, to argue that uh, he's not the GOAT at this point. Oh, breakfast burritos and football sounds good. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, I mean, it wasn't the worst game of football I've ever seen, but it never really looked like uh, Kansas City were going to put together a comeback at any point. <sighs> All right, so I think now we're doing the answers. <laughs> yeah. I can follow what's going on. So which, super, which city hosted Super Bowl 55? It was Tampa, Florida. Yeah, so it was held in Tampa where the Tampa Bay Buccaneers played in and won the first ever home Super Bowl. Should have been us. Should have been us in 2017. We, uh, we dropped the ball. We dropped the ball. Case Keenum, god damn it. Okay. Um, how much did 30 seconds of ad time during Sunday Super Bowl cost? Five and a half million dollars. So down a hundred thousand dollars from the year before. Uh, I think anywhere in the five to six million range will give you a point. So half a million either side will give you the point.
Uh, question three, uh, which Super Bowl halftime inspired phrase was Hollywood's top contribution to language in 2004? Wardrobe malfunction. So uh, <laughs> that's when uh, Justin Timberlake popped out Janice Jackson's boob. Uh, not including teams that have never played in the Super Bowl, which team has the longest currently active Super Bowl appearance drought? Uh, it's the New York Jets. They've not appeared in the Super Bowl since they won uh, Super Bowl three in 1969. Nice. Uh, the Lions have never appeared in the Super Bowl. Uh, Vikings have the second longest drought. And uh, I think Cardinals the third longest. And finally, uh, airing opposite the Super Bowl, first airing up in 2005, we have the Puppy Bowl. Uh, airing every year on Animal Planet opposite the Super Bowl. So let's see how that round affected the scores. I think nip slip was a, an already existing phrase uh, before, before, uh, I think wardrobe malfunction was a, an original coinage. Uh, I think like a few weeks later, Justin Timberlake was at like the VMAs or something, and he apologized for the wardrobe malfunction at the Super Bowl, and everyone really latched onto the phrase. So that was the original coinage that was like named the top contribution to language. So although it's referring to the same event, it's not it's not the the same contribution to language. Um, so very stable genius, uh, extending the lead. They are indeed living up to their name. It looks like still two rounds to go though. So CNS and fear the quiz are definitely still in it. Uh, coping with COVID frozen escape and mousy the back half of the field are all neck and neck on 12 points a piece. So there's also an exciting race uh, at the back of the field. And that takes us to round seven, uh, momentary matrimony. Uh, this round is all about short-lived celebrity marriages, and it's a matching round. So we'll give you the names of five celebrity couples, and you have to choose uh, from the little drop-down list how long each marriage lasted. So we've got some different uh, uh, periods of time for you to choose from. Uh, your five celebrity calls are uh, Russell Brand and Katy Perry, number two, uh, Britney Spears and Jason Alexander, not George Costanza. Britney Spears was not married to the actor who plays George Costanza in the popular sitcom Seinfeld. It's a different Jason Alexander. <clears throat> Number three, uh, Drew Barrymore and Tom Green. Uh, Number four, Carmen Electra and Dennis Rodman. And number five, Avril Lavigne and Chad Kroger, Canadian royalty. So, who had a short marriage and who had a really, really, really short marriage? Definitely, there are a few people uh, in this selection that I could have uh, put more than one of their marriages in this round. Let's just say that. Some people, once they get that first really short marriage under their belts, they're like, huh, that wasn't so bad. I could go for three or four more of those. 
What what have I done to the what have I done to the sound? Is the sound going weird? I feel like I'm being subtweeted in my own chat by my own producer slash wife. Here's a different app. You put your wedding anniversary in it, and literally the only thing it does is it gives you a push notification every time your marriage outlasts that of various celebrities. So, you know, one day you wake up and it's like, bing, you've been married longer than, you know, Drew Barrymore and one of her other short-lived celebrity marriages. Did she ever marry the guy out of the strokes? I think it's any idea. I don't know how to make apps. People giving producer Jessica her due props. Love to see it. She is the hamster that makes this wheel run. All right, so I think everyone's got their answers in. Um, so let's run through our momentary matrimony answers. First up, Russell Brown and Katy Perry were married for 14 months. They never quite managed a full calendar year. Uh, I think they got married like October, November, one year. And then the following year, they got almost the full year under their belts. And it was like New Year's Eve. Uh, Russell Brand texted to Katy Perry that he wanted a divorce. <laughs> Free Britney. Um, yeah, we still haven't watched that documentary. Yeah, the Leave Britney Alone guy was right the whole time. Uh, yeah, but uh, Britney Spears and Jason Alexander, I think a childhood friend of hers, they were married for 55 hours before getting it annulled. I think that was like a wild Vegas wedding. I think some some court just ruled in Britney's favor in the whole free bit free Britney thing. So good for her. Uh, question three: uh, Drew Barrymore, Tom Green, 163 days, so you no know, five, five months or something like that. Uh, Carmen Electra and Dennis Rodman, six days, which to me is the weirdest amount of time on the list. Like 55 hours, you're like, oh yeah, like you sober up and get annulled. Uh, you know, five months, it's like, oh, that was a bad idea to get married, we should get divorced. Six days, it's like just in that weird no man's land. How does that happen? And uh, last one. Avril Lavigne and Chad Kroger managed two years, which is just relatively, uh, relatively well done uh, in the context of this list. Let's see how the scores are now. And a very stable genius, still in the lead, um, a whopping lead, seven point lead. So I think we can say pretty confidently, some very stable genius will be the winner this evening. Uh, CNS, um, a noble, a noble attempt, and uh, held the lead there for the whole of the first half. But uh, um, a rough round five seems to have doomed them here. Uh, Fear the Queers uh, could actually get a surprise second place finish um, if they do well on this next round. And then coming with COVID, Frozen Escape, Mousy has uh, just distanced themselves a little from the pack. So they should actually be up there in fourth place there. All right, so uh, we've been married, it will be five years in April. Three. Are you three right? Are you? Can we just bring the scores up there? I think. What's what's your team name, Chantal? 
Oh, uh, yeah. So there, there was a scoring issue. They will be double checked before the final scores. So uh, that will be all fixed before we reveal the final scores, which adds a little element of tension because now you don't know what to predict. Um, but don't worry, Jessica is working on that behind the scenes. I think the auto scorer, most like some of the rounds where it's just like multiple choice and stuff, they just, there's a little algorithm that scores it. Um, but I think we switched the order of a couple of questions, which might have moved stuff around. So that will all be fixed. Don't you worry. Uh, but we've got our final round to get through. It's another round of general knowledge. Uh, so that was what uh, CNS did so well in, in round one. They had a perfect general knowledge in round one. Uh, let's see how they do in this one. Keep themselves safely in second place. So uh, the final round of general knowledge, question one, uh, in which country in mind Europe's largest banana plantation? So is that in uh, Portugal, Greece, Italy, or Iceland? Portugal, Greece, Italy, or Iceland? Uh, question two, which unconventional method did Thaba Moyo, uh, then mayor of Bulawayo in Zimbabwe, Employ in order to prevent blocked sewage pipes. Apologies for any pronunciation mistakes there. So your options are, um, did he release thousands of dung beetles into the pipes? He blasted compressed air through the whole sewer system. Uh, he ordered a synchronized flush of all the city's toilets. Or he banned toilet paper. Okay, question three. Uh, which year of the Chinese zodiac begins today? Is it the year of the rat, the year of the ox, the year of the tiger, or the year of the rabbit? Question four, uh, the three most cultivated staple crops in the world, so that's rice, wheat, and corn slash maize, account for what percentage of calories eaten every day? So if you took all the calories consumed by every person on earth in a day, what percentage of those calories would come from those three crops? Is it about 20%, about 30%, about 40%, or about 50%. And our final general knowledge question of the evening. Uh, who interrupted the funeral of American President Andrew Jackson by launching into a loud, foul-mouthed tirade. Was it his parrot, his wife, his son-in-law, or Abraham Lincoln? So who, who was it that interrupted that funeral? All right, so we'll see how the scores shake out very shortly. Uh, I think I can give a preemptive congratulations to Very Stable Genius. Um, just a very consistent, one could say stable performance throughout. That's the way to do it. Um, also CNS. 
very very well played just that that one that one one bad round really sunk the ship it's a, it's a shame to see but valiantly played and of course thank you to everyone else who showed up we've been having a good time making these quizzes for European audience and it's fun to share it with people back in Olsen. We obviously, we loved Olsen when we were there, still love Olsen. Uh, and a lot of my, my fun memories of Olsen are from the trivia nights at Sticky Fingers. So it's kind of like reliving those days. Um, so, uh, European quiz the time doesn't really work out very conveniently for, uh, people in Korea, but we do have a newsletter for the trivia lovers, uh, which you can find uh, a link to sign up to on our website. Our website is triviamystery.com. Um, so that's our like little trivia, trivia company. And, um, we have, uh, our newsletter, which is like little weekly digests of kind of whatever fun trivia we've been uh, researching that week that didn't make it into the quiz for wh whichever reason. We get uh, all kinds of different facts that we just can't quite shape them into questions and we enjoy them and we'd like to share them. So that makes it into our newsletter. It's called the Lanyap. Um, we would love to, we would love to, uh, if we can, um, find a, a way to squeeze uh, a quiz in at an hour that works for, for a Korean audience. Uh, maybe not weekly like we do our other ones, but, you know, it'd be nice if we could manage it once a month or so, uh, just because it, it's fun. I like to do it. All right, so uh, let's have a look at uh, the quest uh, the answers for round eight. So first up, ah, yes. So there we go. Jessica's added a little survey for uh, what times are best for people. Uh, so if we can find out a time that works out uh, for you guys that doesn't uh, uh, clash with work for us and stuff like that, then uh, yeah, we'd love to do this more often. Uh, so question one, in which country can you find Europe's largest banana plantation? It's in Iceland, surprisingly enough. It's uh, heated by uh, geothermal heat. And question two, uh, um, in uh, Bulawayo, uh, the mayor ordered a synchronized flush of all the city's toilets. So the problem with the, with the, with the pipes there was actually during a drought, a lot of people were really avoiding letting any running water go from the house so the pipes were drying out so that was going to be causing trouble for the pipes so he ordered a synchronized flush to make sure that the pipes didn't dry out too much um then question three uh it's the year of the ox it's the year of the ox starting today so where my ox is at i'm a rabbit so oxes are like a couple of years older than me there's got to be a couple of them around Then uh, question four, 40% of all the world's calories come from those three plants, which oh, I thought that's a surprisingly high number. There's other starches around. There's, you know, potatoes and cassava are both pretty widespread, but yeah, 40% just from three crops. Then at number five. Uh, Andrew Jackson's funeral was interrupted by his uh, African gray parrot, it was actually originally his wife's parrot. He actually outlived his wife um, and it became his parrot. Uh, and yeah, African gray is notoriously uh, intelligent, uh, much vocabulary, but <clears throat> belligerent birds. So let's take a look at the final scores. Oh, and 
we've uh, sorry about that. We've uh, retabulated the scores, and TNS uh, finishing in second place with twenty six. A very stable genius at twenty nine points. I guess the gap was not as big as we thought um, going into it. Uh, well done, uh, very stable genius. Very good performance. Look at that. Not, not below three. In any round, that's how you that's how you get a victory. Uh, CNS, great job in second place. Feel the feel the quiz, not too far behind. Twenty one, Frozen Escape kind of broke out of the pack uh, there. Seventeen points in fourth place, and then coping with COVID and Mousy tied on fifteen. So thank you everyone that showed up. I had fun. It seems like a lot of you guys had fun. Um, so yeah, the game was a uh, a bit closer than we thought going into the final round because of that score correction that. Uh, some of you noticed this was coming beforehand. So, uh, yeah, great job. Thanks for playing, everyone. I had fun. Um, yeah, we'd love to do this again. Uh, we might be able to, if we can find a time that works for everyone, we could make this a, a, a regular thing. It, uh, I'd, I'd certainly enjoy that. All right. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice a little bit right now, so I'm going to sign off. Uh, but yeah, we'd love to see you next time we do this. We'll post it on Awesome Online or something if we do. And uh, yeah, see you around. Bye, guys.